We have some surprising things to talk about in this video, folks. This is Tony. Hope you're all doing well. So many things to cover, folks. We're going to be talking about what's going on with our stores. Is it on purpose? Are they actually allowing all of this you know, theft that we've been seeing around us? There's actually a reason behind it. We'll show you that in this video. Also, what's coming to McDonald's and a lot of these other restaurants? How about $18 burgers? Does that sound good? We're going to be getting into what's going on with our city, some new stuff from Walmart and also Target. We'll be getting into so many things. Also, zombie firms, zombie cities, so many more things as we get into this video, folks. Let's start with this. First, we'll start with McDonald's. McDonald's now potentially having $18 Big Macs. How does that sound, folks? Let's see if I can get it on the screen. Might actually help. There we go. Uh, McDonald's revenue soars as it hikes menu prices. $18 Big Macs. Oh, this sounds so great, folks. You go to McDonald's just so you can get some quick food, allegedly at a low price. You're not really thinking about your nutrition probably when you go there. <laughs> And now you get to pay $18 for a Big Mac? That sounds so great. Um, I don't know why they're saying $18. Let's see what this is. One branch in Darren, Connecticut, charging as much as $18 for a Big Big Mac combo meal. Uh, let's see if I can get this closer in on it. Wow. That's expensive, folks. 20 bucks for a Big Mac combo meal, folks. <laughs> unbelievable that's what we get to look forward to in the year to come 2024 is going to be awesome folks you're not going to be able to afford anything not even a big mac meal anymore 62 percent of americans still living paycheck to paycheck making it the main financial lifestyle report finds this is from today no yesterday number of americans who say they have stretched too thin has shown no signs of improvement amid high prices, higher interest rates. Federal Reserve Jerome Powell recently said inflation is still too high, indicating that interest rates stay higher for longer. And this is what I've been saying. We're going to see eight more years of this, folks. Literally. I think we're going to see it actually go up much higher. Not this year, probably not next year. Maybe 2025, we're going to see it even go much higher than it already is. Maybe we're going to be looking forward to $50 Big Mac meals. <laughs> oh, I can't just can't wait for that, folks. Can't wait. Car owners fall behind on payments, highest rate on record. And like I said, we're going to be getting into some really interesting stories here, folks. These are just sort of the beginning stuff we're talking about. We're going to be getting into some really curious things behind all of this theft. They're actually doing it, from what we can tell, on purpose for a reason. And I'm going to show you how they contradict themselves. And it's all about moving where we're at as a you know nation, a country, whatever you want to call it, to a certain goal. All right? We'll be getting into that as we get farther into this video. And there's actually a lot of stuff we're going to be covering. Obviously, car owners are not doing too well. That's pretty much everybody. Falling behind on payments, huge amount of people way behind now. And we're seeing a lot of companies not doing too well right now. Ford, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley are among the 120 S&P 500 stocks that have plunged over 20% since the end of July. Was it Morgan Stanley that just had this massive, I think I have a story on that too, just had like 2,000 people lose their job. Was it Morgan Stanley? And, and they're like closing down their main headquarters and stuff. I don't know if I'm talking about that in this video. Uh, I got way too many windows open. I think I do eventually. We'll be getting into that later. I think they lost... It was, was it Morgan Stanley? Hey, maybe I'm wrong. We'll get into it. I got a lot of stuff to cover. <laughs> so one of these banks literally lost 31% of their deposits. 31%. 31% of the people moved out of the bank their money all right uh i think i cover that in this video i'm pretty sure we cover it three months okay obviously we got to cover this first folks <laughs> food supply 25 year shelf life link is in the description three months worth for 797 
Two weeks for work, two weeks worth for 127. I can't speak for some reason. And what's interesting is we have a number of things going on all around the world right now. And every day or two, we have a new country involved. We now have Egypt talking like they're going to get involved. We have Turkey talking like they're going to get involved. We have something from Iraq even. Weren't we just pulled out of there? We're going to be doing something there too now? Like literally we got like about seven countries that are... How many places are we going to go into, folks? We're going to be getting into that too in this video. <laughs> Is this not already world, you know, WAR number three? I don't know. I guess we'll find out, right? At any rate, uh, food supply, 25 year shelf life. Link is in the description. Also, this book here, The Lost Ways, how your great great grandfather lived without electricity. And you could soon, I mean, honestly, people just can't imagine it. We've been in this, this brain, you know, fog for all this time, living and relying on electricity, on our cell phones, on our computers, on just the lights above us to give us light during the nighttime. What if that all ends one day, folks? What if just out of nowhere and then it's months before you see it again? You're going to definitely want to have this book just in case, folks, how to do everything you need to know how to do, how, how to for recipes, how to create things uh, that you will need around the house. Uh, link is in the description. $30 some dollars. Get the printed version plus shipping. Uh, let's get on with the video here. So also, of course, my website. I just uploaded many new videos over there, folks. Uh, tons of new videos. Some of my old videos that are really good as well I put up in there. Uh, link is in the description. Lots of exclusive videos, stuff you will not see on any of my channels over there. Some of them are like really good videos I made years ago that are still relevant today. Some of them are, uh, there's like three or four new videos. I think it's four that are ones I just made like podcast type. They're like hour long each covering really important stuff uh, that's going on right now. Um, link is in the description for that as well. Four ninety five a month. First month is free. So let's get back to the video. So now, what's going on with our treasury? So you can see it's really getting ridiculous at this point. What's going on with the budget? Seven. We're going to borrow. Treasury is going to borrow seven hundred seventy six billion in the final three months of the year. The Treasury said it expects to borrow $816 billion between January and March next year. The announcement comes 10 days after the government said the fiscal 2023 budget deficit would be about $1.7 trillion. And it's just amazing how big the deficit has become at this point. I got a graph showing you just kind of to give you an idea of how much money this is, right? <laughs> okay, so this is like 10 million here. This is a million. This is 10 million. Let's go down here. Here we got a trillion. You see this, you know, 747 Boeing here. This is 580 feet, 508 feet long. Let's go down here. I don't know if I can show this on the screen down here. Uh, maybe. Uh, sort of. This is like a very tall skyscraper, okay? This, uh, Willis Tower, Willis Tower, folks. Um, you can see in December 2022, it cost $210 billion to maintain the debt, or about 15% of the total government spending for the year. You have here, I think it's, how many trillions is this? Like 33, 32 trillion? So, just to give you an idea how much we're talking about we're talking about multiple multiple skyscrapers worth of dollars uh about 12 skyscrapers full of just dollar bills just if you built it out of dollar bills that's how much our national debt is <laughs> quite a few and so that's and what's interesting of course is the irs tells us that they collected 160 million in back taxes so we put all these new IRS people to work just to get a measly 160 million folks, 160 million. That was like over here. This is 10 million right here, right? So this is a billion. So just a very small fraction of this, right? 
not very much. And, and supposedly they're supposed to be getting all this revenue when they're not getting hardly anything. And they're going after these millionaires when they have billionaires that are really the ones that are not paying enough. And then on top of that, you got the GOV itself wasting money left and right. That's where the real problem is, not millionaires, generally speaking. It's more the GOV itself is the problem. And actually, it was Charles Schwab. This is the one I was thinking. I was like trying to remember. Among the top 15 deposit holders, Charles Schwab reported the largest year-over-year -year decrease in deposits, 31.1%, $304 billion exiting. So you got huge amounts of money going out of these, and they're the ones cutting like thousands of jobs right now. Big banks are quietly cutting thousands of employees. Actually, just one bank is cutting thousands of employees. This one right here is cutting thousands. <laughs> it's not even counting any of the other ones. Uh <laughs> Just one. So let's get into some of these other topics. Like I said, we're going to be getting into some really important ones as we get farther into this video. 2030, California needs to be 60% reliant on renewable energy. 2045, California needs to be 100% carbon free. Let me show you how ridiculous this is as a goal. Okay, right now they can't even sell you an electric car to where you're actually paying the bill for the electric energy used and consumed by the car the taxpayer right here's the taxpayer paying we're actually paying for these electric cars to run around us folks this right here is the amount of money you're paying at the gas pump for your gas guzzling suv to pay for these electric cars to go down the road so just a long story short for essentially what you pay for a gallon of gas right to go like 40 miles we're paying about $13. Each person that's a taxpayer is paying $13 per 40 miles that an electric vehicle goes. So each one of us is paying literally $13. So it costs $17 to go 40 miles with one of these electric vehicles. If you actually calculate it correctly, there is no way they're gonna be replacing a bunch of gas guzzling cars with electric vehicles the way it is currently. It and they've had them for 20 years. They've had electric vehicles for a long, long time. This isn't some new technology, okay? GM had them like a million years ago, okay? So $17 to go 40 miles, essentially, with these cars. And they want to somehow get rid of all the gas, gas cars and just have only electric. It's not gonna happen. But of course, obviously this isn't an interesting way to invest though. I mean, there's going to definitely be a lot of money going towards a lot of these electric vehicle type companies. Might be a good thing to, to look into battery stocks, things like this, to invest. Currently, I don't know if in the end, it's not going to become, I really don't see it happening the way they want it to happen. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. The way I see it, we have these C, you know, 40 cities that they're all signing up. This is how many cities we have. It's like 20% of the national GDP for America, particularly. Um, you look up North America, you got all these cities, Austin, Boston, Chicago, all pledging to essentially get rid of gas vehicles, make it so you can't own a vehicle. I mean, well, they're not exactly that. I mean, that's not what they're saying. They're saying their goal. Their goal is for you not to own a vehicle. There's a goal for you not to have a gas car. There's a goal for you never to eat meat again. That's another one. And I've talked about this before. And what's interesting, we're seeing this theft thing. The, the whole theft thing actually plays into what I'm talking about right now, and you'll see it. We're going to start getting into that in a second because all the stuff I'm telling you is actually going to line up sort of to what we're trying to get to, folks. So they want you to eat zero kilograms of meat. That's their ideal goal by 2030. No meat, no dairy, I guess bugs. I don't. I, what else? Tree bark? I guess we're going to be eating tree bark and bugs or something. I don't know what they want us to eat. No meat, no dairy. <laughs> I guess you're just going to be eating carbs all the time. Pizza, just cheese, not even cheese pizza. What is it going to be? What is it going to be? It's not even pizza. You can't even eat pizza, man. Yeah, eat bread. going to eat bread, folks. Cereal. going to eat cereal all day long. That's apparently what we're going to be eating. So, of course, this, this here is the plan that they're actually referring to in all of these articles. There's actually a lot of other stuff on here they're talking about. They want to lower. And what's interesting about this, if you look at this, they're saying it's all about the environment. 
right? But actually it really isn't all about the environment. See, the environment is, we used to believe it was about saving the environment, saving trees, saving animals. But now from what I can tell, it's more like we want to somehow get rid of the trees. This is actually one of their latest projects. Lower the amount of the sun, uh, dim the sun, and make it so we don't have any carbon, uh, carbon dioxide, you know, you breathe out. They want you to stop breathing pretty much. I, I mean, I don't know why else to explain it. They want to tax you for that. They actually have a law in New York taxing your landlord for you breathing. And they want to do that everywhere, folks. So what is this all about? So what is this? It's all about getting rid of the smaller, of course, businesses. It's not about saving the environment because if it was about saving the environment, we would be trying to plant trees, not take them down. We wouldn't be trying to dim the sun because actually the more sun you have, the more plant life you have, the more plant life you have, the lower the temperature is. You remember it used to be about global warming. Now they call it climate change. So actually, if you want to solve global warming, you want more sunlight because it causes the trees and, and, the, and the plants to suck up the light. Okay. And this is something that they recently learned. Maybe that's why they changed it to climate change. I don't know. But what's interesting is I think the ultimate goal of this is really to just get rid of the small companies. They want only a few really big companies like Amazon, Walmart. This is what they want. They don't want any of the second. That's why you see all these secondary like uh, Tuesday mornings, all these different companies that are a little bit smaller, struggling, go out of business. And they only want to keep the big ones. Why? It's just like we see with everything else, with the meat processing plants, with car companies. They're consolidating, consolidating. So there's only a couple companies owning everything. And there's only a couple people at the top that own all those companies. And they're the ones putting out, oh, save the planet. But really, is it really about saving the planet? It's about getting rid of companies. And that's also what this crime thing is. And here's an interesting thing you have in California to spend $267 million to crack down on brazen, cr smash and grab store thefts. He wants to hire more police. Interestingly, of course, Gavin here not that long ago, was exactly on the opposite side, opposite side of the coin, saying he wanted to get rid of the police. Okay? So, uh, well, actually, it's not this part here. Smash and grab robberies wreak havoc on U.S. stores. Uh, uh, this is the wrong article. Where's the right article? Uh, yeah, here it is. Here's the article. It's the next one. Uh, defund, of course, the police, or put more money in the police's coffers. Well, apparently... Gavin here has switched his opinion in like, what, a couple years? And But it doesn't really make sense because there's a very simple way to solve this whole problem. It's called make the correct laws. They already had it working before and they changed it to where you could get $950 worth of items out of a store with a slap on the wrist. And this made it so they were more brazen about going in and taking things from these stores. All you have to do is fix the law and enforce it. You don't need more police. You see what I'm getting at? Or is it because of some other reason they want more police? Like this is used as an excuse to get more police. So they make these weird laws that don't work. And then they say, oh, we need more police because these laws aren't. And they don't tell you it's the law's problem. See, see what I mean? So they cause this problem and then they get what they want. And this is kind of what I'm thinking it is. So we're seeing uh, more and more of this because they're purposely wanting this. And this also gets rid of these small companies because they can't handle this. They're living in these cities and these cities have laws that work against these stores. These store owners, these small mom and pop shops can't deal with it. Even companies like Rite Aid, it's not big enough. Okay. It's not a Walgreens, right? So it is probably going to go under. Rite Aid signals it could be the next, just be getting started on slashing a store portfolio. It can't handle what's going on. So it's going to probably go under. Target, the company Target, and Walmart and Kroger, interesting things going on there. This also explains why they're allowing these smash and grabs. In these stores, is because they're taking on robots. Okay. Target makes a change that Walmart and Kroger have not done. And actually, Walmart and Kroger, actually, Kroger's already made a change themselves as well. I'll get into that as well. So all these companies are making changes. But Target made another interesting change, which is to get more robots because they don't ask for raises and they don't complain. 
You see, what it really is all about is those at the top that own all the companies below because they're getting rid of all the competition with these smash and grabs. Then they have their own portfolio as the only one left. They want robots to replace us at the workplace. This is why they're not encouraging things like families, having, of course, offspring. They want you to just be yeah, party all the time. You know, and that's why the that's why it's so low now. And then of course our our you need 2.1 uh per family to just simply maintain the, the population levels evenly. Okay. So if it keeps getting lower, they need to replace the lack of people with what? Robots. So they want to have less and less people, more and more robots. That's why you see all this stuff going on. And so they want more automation in these in these companies. So Target would be basically all robots. You're going to be buying basically a $50 Big Mac from a robot at McDonald's. That's basically what I'm telling you. Okay, like in 5, 10 years. That's basically the idea. All right. So, <laughs> of course, you got the movie Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Could this be what they want? Well, robots don't have feelings. They don't have things called conscience. They don't care if they do something that you don't like. You see what I'm getting at? That sounds kind of ideal for someone who only cares about money at the top, who owns all the stuff below it, right? This is kind of the idea behind it. So Target goes this direction. They're also the first ones to put glass up everywhere. Kroger, on the other hand, what they've done is they've in, put in artificial intelligence, one that can actually detect how mannerisms and movements as you're doing a checkout. They look for patterns. Walmart already had that, I think, a year ago, actually. I think Target has a little bit more sophisticated one. Not Target, Kroger. Has a more sophisticated one. So basically what they're trying to do is make it to where it's all automated, robots, you know, AI, all this kind of stuff. And this is where they're trying to take all the cities. And they're trying to get rid of the small mom and pop shops. It's kind of like those Old West movies. You remember those Old West movies where the rich guy comes into town... He tries to buy everybody out, but nobody wants to sell. And then all of a sudden, they all get shook down and they're selling because if they don't, you know, something's going to happen to them. Okay. Sort of the same idea, except for on a more sophisticated level. And supposedly, you're not supposed to notice. Okay. We're not supposed to notice all these things. At any rate, of course, Amazon's saying, no, we're not going to replace people with robots, which they've already done. But they're claiming they're not going to do any more of that. Amazon says its robots will speed up delivery and definitely not replace humans. We're not trying to replace you. Uh, you know, I, just like by 2030, there's going to be like five people working at Amazon and all robots. They have 750,000 robots now, folks, to give you an idea. So they claim they're not going to replace humans, right? Walmart, Canada. Is this loading? All right, there we go. Walmart Canada investing $3.5 billion over five years in smarter stores. This is what I was talking about. Smart, you know, cities. This is what they're going towards. This is what these people at the top want and are trying to bring to pass by changing laws in a wrong direction. Get, you know, judges in a certain place to do what they want. This, that, and the other so they can move things around to get more money, more what they want, more consolidation. This is what all this is. And of course, it's going to become something like one of these sci-fi movies, like The Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. Very easily happen based on what I'm seeing. It might sound like something in the distant future, but honestly, I don't really see it as being that far in the future at this point. Maybe 10 years? 10 years maybe? That's kind of how I'm looking at it. But, and actually, like I said, I'm going to be getting into a lot more of this over, I'm going to be doing three videos and I'm going to be covering our different aspects and getting into different themes or whatever you want to call it, uh, more so on my other channels. As I go through this, I'm not going to cover everything. I'm going to even get into the good book itself over on my other channels and, and predictions and things like that in Revelation, things like that, folks. But uh, the fact of the matter is we're seeing you know, global shelf checkout systems market to reach $9.3 by 2030. Rising demand in retail stores and advancements in technology. So this is where it's all at. We, we, we changed the laws to allow for people to go and take stuff, smash and grabs. This allows us to then go substantiate our new purchases in robots and AI to 
you know, protect our goods when they could easily just change the laws back to what they used used to be. So it was it was something created on purpose so they could get things in place the way they want them to be. And we got zombie firms, we got zombie cities. We're going to be getting into that as well over on my other channel. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about, we got zombie firms, zombie cities, desert, desert, uh, cities, desert towns, like ghost towns, uh, desert food deserts. We got lots of these crazy things coming out folks. Um, and I'm going to be covering more of that on my other channel, but we'll get into a little bit, uh, a little bit more here. Zombie firms, as you can see, bankruptcy of Fed commits higher rates. This is all about basically consolidation, getting rid of these. These companies can be sold pennies on the dollar. They go out of business. They are purposely put out of business by those that own the other side. But they don't look like they're owned by the other side. That's why they're faceless. We don't know who they are at the top. That way it's perfect. Okay? Zombie cities. I'll be getting into that over my other channel. Uh, you know, like the, the TV show, the last of us kind of looks like what could be the future. I actually had a dream and it actually looked literally like this right here. I remember having this dream and I know it was in the future. And I remember walking around and I remember walking up to like a taco bell and it was like, it was like brush growing on it like this and stuff. And I remember walking through a tunnel like this and people are just walking around. There's no cars in the dream. So I don't know what that was, if that was just my imagination or if it was something else, seeing something that could happen soon. They even putting out articles about how you can so survive a zombie apocalypse. Um, why would you do that? <laughs> so I'm going to be getting into all that stuff and much more in my other video, getting into where they're trying to take these smart, you know, cities. You got Neom and all these things. I'm going to get into tons more stuff over my other channel, even some stuff about Elon Musk and also what's going on with these WARs, which continually, there's more and more countries getting involved. Kind of what some of you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.